So in the Dino ecosystem, there's a library called DinoDB. DinoDB is basically a little library that actually acts like a SQL ORM. And what that basically means is that it allows us to actually, you know, sort of create tables, query our tables by simply adding data or deleting data, updating data, or reading data out of our tables. And it allows us to actually also set up relationships on our tables. In other words, we can say that we have like a one-to-many relationship or a many-to-many relationship. And we can do all this using DinoDB straight from within our code without ever having to write any bit of SQL or touching any kind of SQL GUI. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use it. All right, so here's a setup. All I've got is a simple app.ts file. That's where we're going to be pretty much writing all of our code. It's empty as it is right now. And then we have a file called db.sqlite because the database that we're going to be using along with DinoDB is going to be a SQLite database. If you want to use MySQL or Postgres or MongoDB, that's totally fine. You can also use SQLite, which I think for the sake of this tutorial is probably the right choice because it's the simplest and easiest one to kind of get up and running with. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is actually go ahead and set up a database connection. And then what we're going to do is in code, we're going to actually go ahead and build a person's table. So let me show you exactly how that's done using DinoDB. Okay, so here's what we've done so far. I've imported database model, data types, and relationships from the DinoDB uh, library. The one that we're using so far is going to be this database class. And as you can see, I'm creating a new instance called DB by newing up this database class. And then we have to basically pass it some configuration options. The first uh, sort of option that we tell it is sort of going to be which database we're going to be using. So if you see, we can actually have different options. It can be either SQLite, Postgres, MySQL, or Mongo. Again, we're just going to be using SQLite. And then here, because we're using SQLite, all we need to do is just kind of tell it where to find our database file, and like where the path to that file is. And so we're just going to say, go ahead and find our file right over here, dot slash db dot SQLite. But again, if you're going to be using a different type of database, then your actual configuration object would be different. And so very clearly documented in the Dino DB documentation, which I'm going to link down in the description box below. So you could have an easier time following along should you choose to use a different database. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is actually go ahead and create a people's table that we're going to actually go ahead and put into our database. And what's going to be interesting about this is we're going to be able to do this without writing any sort of SQL or actually touching any kind of GUI. We're all going to be able to handle it straight from within code using the DinoDB library. So let's do that right now. Okay, so let me walk you through the code of what I've written so far. Basically, you notice I'm creating a class called person, which is extending a model that I've imported from DinoDB. And here on line eight, I'm basically specifying what the name of the table is going to be. So you'll notice that the name of the class is actually person, but the name of the table is people. The reason why I did this is because you typically want the name of your class to be singular, but you want the name of your tables to sort of be more plural. And so if you don't do this, if you leave this off, if you leave the static table off, then what's going to end up happening is by default, the name of your table will just be the name of your class. And so since I don't want my name, the name of my class to be people, because it's just a single person, right? One instance is one person. So therefore what you do is you say static table is equal to people. So now you can have your class name be singular and kind of have it one way. And then the name of your table can be done another way. And that can sort of be the more plural version of the name of your class. And then down here, I'm basically specifying two fields that we're going to have on this table. The one is going to be an ID. It's going to be a type integer and it's going to be a primary key. And then finally, we have the name, uh, the name field, which is just going to be a type string. If you wanted to specify more options, like say if it should be, you know, how long it can be or whether or not it's allowed to be null or what the default value can be, all that can actually get specified right over here. And if you want to see more about how that's done, you can find that down in the, in the uh, link. I'm going to drop for the documentation. Finally, here on line 19, we're basically just going to go ahead and link the actual person uh, table. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and say db.sync. This is actually going to go ahead and execute the necessary queries to actually go ahead and build up the person table in our database. Once that's done, now we can actually start writing some queries to actually go ahead and add items or read items out of our database. So let's actually go and write the code now to go ahead and add an item into our database. Okay, so let me walk you through what I've just done. As you can see, I'm referencing this person class that we've just created. I'm calling its create method. The create method pretty much expects us to sort of pass in whatever value we want to sort of add as a row to the table. And so in this case, we're just creating a simple object that's going to have a key called name. The value is going to be John. And we're literally just going to go ahead and create a new uh, sort of row in our people's table. And that's just going to go ahead and say uh, key name value John. And then it's going to have an ID of one because this is the first item that we're, that we're now creating. 
Finally, in the next line, I'm literally gonna go ahead and create a variable called all, which pretty much is just going to be an array of all the values that we already have within our table. And the way that we get that is by simply calling person at all. That gives me just pretty much just an array of everything that already exists within this table. Now we just have the one item. So therefore we're just gonna have an array of one item. And then pretty much on line 25, I'm just gonna go ahead and log that, that sort of all array to the actual terminal. So let's see if this actually works. So as you can see, in order to run this, you actually have to pass quite a lot of flags. I'm going to leave these flags down in the description box below so you'll have an easier time actually running this code if you're trying to follow along. But pretty much we're just going to go ahead and say Dino uh, run unstable, allow read, allow write, allow net, allow plugin. And then we're just going to go ahead and say app.ts, which is the name of this file. We go ahead and run the code. And as you can see, we literally have an array of person where we have the ID of one and then the uh, name is actually equal to John. Now we've actually seen what it takes to create a table and we've also seen what it takes to actually go ahead and add a record to that table. Now let's see what it takes to go ahead and delete a record from this table. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm pretty much just gonna go ahead and say person.where, where the ID is equal to one, go ahead and delete that. So we're simply gonna use the where clause that exists with on the person class. And then that pretty much just allows us to sort of where by whatever we want. So in this case, we're gonna say wherever the ID is equal to one. So here is pretty much where you put the key you want to sort of match on and then the value that you want to find for that particular key and then the method of what you want to do for that particular item in this case we want to actually go ahead and delete it now to see whether or not it's actually been effectively deleted we're once again going to go ahead and query the table to kind of get all the values out of it and if the delete actually worked correctly we should get no data so let's see if this works and as you can see we are now actually getting an empty array let's now go ahead and explore how you can actually go ahead and create relationships between our tables so the scenario that we're going to have is we have a table of people already now let's go ahead and create a new table called shops. And so the basic idea is that one person can shop at many different stores and one store can have many different customers. So we're basically gonna go ahead and create a many to many relationship between people and stores. And we're gonna see just how easy and intuitive it is to do with DinoDB. So let me show you exactly that right now. All right, so let me show you what I've just done. As you can see on the person class, I pretty much added this new static method called shops. And all it really does is it returns this that has many shop. Basically we're saying that a person can have many shops. I've then created a new class called shop, which pretty much does the sort of the exact same setup as the person class does. It extends the model. We're setting up the table name to have shop. So in other words, the plural version of shop, setting up the basic field. We're saying that's gonna have an ID, which is gonna be the primary key. We're saying it's gonna have a name, the name of the store. And then we're pretty much also setting up a static method called customers, basically saying that a shop can have many person, which we're gonna be calling customers. And then here, what we're actually doing, this is the sort of new bit here as well, is what we're doing is we're creating what's known as a sort of a pivot table. I sometimes also like calling this like a joining table. This basically is a table that's gonna kind of keep track of the relationship between the customers and, or the sort of the users and the actual stores. So in other words, this is what I'm gonna be calling the customers table. So in other words, we're gonna call the relationships class or the relationships object that we're pulling in from DinoDB, calling the many-to-many -many method on it, and we're basically passing in the person and the shop because we're basically saying that there's gonna be a many-to-many -many relationship between the person and then the shop. Finally, we once again go ahead and call the DB link. We're gonna go ahead and say customers, person, and shop, and then we're just gonna go ahead and actually sync up the database to go ahead and actually add these new uh, sort of tables. So in other words, the new table that's gonna get added is gonna be the customers table, as well as the shop table. Now the customers table is going to pretty much have just the three IDs. It's gonna have the sort of its own ID for other incrementing purposes. And then it's gonna have the sort of person ID as well as the shop ID to kind of create that relationship between which person belongs to which shop. Now let's actually go ahead and add some data to both the person table as well as the shop table and then go ahead and take those and add them to the customers table and then see just how easy it is to actually go ahead and query for that relational data without actually having to write any sort of complicated joints. Okay, so let me show you what I've just done. As you can see on the person class, I'm going to add a new record into the person class or into the person table. Then using the shop class, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new store in the actual shop table. Then finally using the customers table, we're actually gonna go ahead and create a record that has a shop ID of one and then a person ID of one to kind of have that relationship between this user or this person and then this actual store. Finally, we're gonna go ahead and get, uh, create a variable called person and that's going to be equal to the value that we're gonna get from this query here, where we're basically saying person that where ID is equal to one dot shops. So in other words, give me all the shops, give me all the records that you can find within my sort of joining table, 
where the actual person's ID is actually equal to one. So it allows me to kind of write the join without actually having to write any sort of join. So this is a much sort of simpler syntax. I don't have to think about complicated joins. I can just go ahead and say, give me the person who has an ID of one and then give me all of its corresponding shops. So in this case, we just have the one, the one person and then the one shop. So I'm only expecting to kind of get one record. Let's actually see if this does in fact work. So as you can see, when I run the code, I do in fact only get sort of one record from the pivot class where its own ID is actually one, the person ID is one, the shop ID is one, and then the actual name of that particular shop that belongs to this person, that person ID one, is in fact supermarket. So as you can see, we very, very, very easily were able to kind of query all the shops that belongs to the person of ID, of, with ID of one, all of that having to write any sort of complicated joins or any kind of complicated SQL, all basically using very sort of straightforward TypeScript that we're very familiar with and have pretty much um, been using for a long time. And that pretty much does it for this video. I definitely hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video.